Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at DataStream, Google's change data capture service. So we'll be covering a Postgres database to BigQuery. First, let's quickly see what are the use cases for change data capture. So change data capture can be used for doing analytics. You might have several OLTP or transactional databases and you want to consolidate them in a warehouse so you can do analytics across the databases. The second use case is uh, taking work off your OLTP system, and this uh, helps in a couple ways. One, you might want to take off reporting workloads so they're not slowing down your OLTP system. And also, OLTP systems typically scale up, which means buying additional hardware and possibly more licenses, and then you have to do a migration. So you can offload this work using change data capture to BigQuery so we can do analytics in the cloud. So um, this was uh, deployed with a private network, and we will also um, go through the data generation. So we have 10 million rows of change data capture, so we have plenty of data to see how it flows to BigQuery. So we'll start off with um, some of the services. So here's the overview of what we'll cover. And as noted before, um, we have a public and private IP. We'll go through the airflow routines. We'll go through the whole entire data stream demo. We'll see a look at report. And then I'll show you how to customize this demo if you'd like to use your own tables or your own uh, change data capture data. Okay, so first we're going to head over to Airflow. So with Airflow to launch the uh, and deploy the services, there's a couple DAGs we have here. We have sample data stream private IP deploy. So this DAG needs to be run and this will deploy our Postgres database and our SQL reverse proxy and configure data stream so we can have everything configured up and running. And then the next service you will want to run is the uh, generate data. So this is going to feed data continuously up to four hours and it will automatically turn off of change data capture. So it's doing insert statements into the Postgres database and then we'll see that data reflected in BigQuery. So I'm going to jump into the deployment aspect first and show you what, uh, what uh, has been deployed so we can um, see it in real time. Uh, the first thing that gets deployed is we're going to create our Postgres database. So I'm gonna click on the log here, and then we will see that a Postgres database is deployed. So here's our Postgres database, and it has a private IP address. So that's deployed for you, so you get a, a fresh database upon each deployment. And then the second thing that's deployed is a C SQL uh, reverse proxy. And this does some routing, so I'll show a network diagram on how this fits in the overall process. And also you can SSH into this machine so we can run SQL statements on our Postgres database. So those two um, items are deployed first. And then second, we need to uh, run our schema and uh, configure change data capture in Postgres. So the second part of the DAG here, it's going to create three tables. So you have a driver review and payment table. I insert one row each. Um, this lets the data set in BigQuery get created and you'll see a record. So just in case you forget to start the um, data generation job, you'll actually see a, a row in there as part of the process. And then we're going to turn on the publication and basically the replication. So this uh, configures the Postgres database for change data capture. And DataStream uh, reaches into your database, so it's not a uh, like a service running on your database. It reaches in and it gets the change data uh, required and brings that over to BigQuery. So that is uh, set up. So our Postgres database is now configured at this point. And then the last part of the uh, configuration is actually configuring uh, DataStream. So DataStream needs a couple pieces to be configured. It needs a connection to Postgres, so the connection is created. It needs a connection to BigQuery, so that cr connection is created. And then we need to actually create the stream. And what this will do is actually uh, go ahead and create the stream using the private IP connectivity. And that connectivity was set up a little bit in the original Terraform script. So let's uh, head over to DataStream and see what this looks like. So I'm going to go over, let's open up DataStream first and take a look at what was configured. So data stream has three things that need to be configured. We need our connectivity and we need our profiles and then we need our stream. So here's our stream, which is currently running. We have our connections 
and these are connected. You can click on these and check out the settings, but you can see we have a private IP address and then we have our private connectivity. So I'll show this in the networking diagram. So that has been deployed along with a SQL database. And this is just a very small cloud SQL database with a private IP. So we can go ahead and do this connectivity. All right, so um, I think we wanna head over to BigQuery now and walk through the demo. So inside the taxi data set, there is a data stream private IP, and we're going to edit this and take a look. So this has a lot of uh, helper pieces up here to tell you how to log in and check out some of the pieces. So we'll go through that as well. But the first thing I wanna do is are we receiving data? So I'm gonna run this statement and what happened is when data stream runs, it will create a data set here. This is a data stream uh, private IP. The underscore public means we're synchronizing the Postgres public schema. So all tables within that public schema. So we have our driver payment and review tables. So the taxi data in New York City doesn't contain the driver information. It just contains um, the trips. So what we're gonna do is um, marry the drivers to the trips and we're doing this through their OLTP database. So pretend we have a database that has the driver information in it, and then we have our warehouse, and we wanna figure out how to join that data. So we have our data being brought in through, um, through data stream. So I'm gonna run a count star here. We have to get about 10,000 driver records, and then it's synchronizing, um, I have the uh, latency set to zero, so it should be adding rows every couple minutes, and you can change the latency to be uh, a different time period, maybe once a day, or however um, you want to, uh, you know, synchronize several times a day. So sometimes I catch up between latencies. So let's see if we can get some change data capture that uh, is coming through. So that was uh, some thousands of rows just came through, so we know our change data capture is running. So now we have our driver data. So we can get our driver names, which is from our OLTP database. And then we can get their average reviews. Again, that's from the OLTP database. And then I'm gonna join by um, some information. So I don't have a primary key between these two systems. So I'm gonna join by pick up and drop off location, total amount, and the date. And this is my warehouse data being joined to my CDC data that's also in my BigQuery warehouse at this point. Let's go ahead and run the SQL statement. And this will basically allow us to bridge that gap between a warehouse and an OLTP system. And in this case, we're using a comp composite key. So you can see here, I have driver information and I have taxi information from my warehouse and they've been joined together and we computed an average rating for this driver. And then we joined, showed the, uh, the trip records in which um, was the composite key matched. So you can also do machine learning here. So a big effort a lot of times is, hey, how do you get additional analytics without overtaxing your OLTP system? So you can do some machine learning on this data once you have it up in BigQuery. So here's credit card data, similar thing. We're gonna get driver uh, data, and then we're gonna take our driver and we're gonna join it through our composite key, and we'll go ahead and get some credit card uh, analysis data. And let's see the results. So it takes a second or two to run because it's still CDCing. So we'll get the latest information. And here we're um, getting the driver's name. We can see the actual credit card. Again, these are fake credit cards. And we can see for each ride, what there was the credit card number used. Um, maybe we're matching customers by credit card number. So we can see that information by pulling information from our credit card system through change data capture and uh, you know joining it to our warehouse data. So again, these things will be increasing. So as I'm running the demo, that Airflow job is running and is continuing to send data into BigQuery. So our next thing is we can actually do deletes and updates. So I'll show you how to do this. So um, we're going to jump into uh, Postgres. I'm not gonna run these because it's generating a lot of data and um, we'll be deleting and generating data at the same time. It will work, but it'll just take a, a few moments to catch up. So let's go to a, gonna jump to this window and we're gonna to go to our compute engine and we're gonna SSH in to our reverse proxy box and I'll move this into the window and we're gonna log into Postgres. So I'm gonna paste my command here and the password. So the password is provided in the store procedure. 
and you can see here we're actually in Postgres. So you can come in here, create tables, do inserts, up del deletes, whatever you'd like, and it will all be uh, captured uh, into BigQuery. So let me go ahead and run a statement. So you can see we just have access to Postgres here. So feel free to come in and create your own tables and do any uh, you know updates or deletes you want throughout the demo. So let's head back to BigQuery and I'll show you um, uh, that at the top. So quickly, one second on how to configure that SSH is when you get the directions here, you will have to run these commands once you SSH into the VM. And this will install the Postgres psql. So that will install psql. And then here's the command to actually log into it. And then here's your password. And then there's some sample queries. So go ahead and give that a try. If you uh, need to update the firewall rule, there is a firewall rule here because I'm going through, uh, basically I'm clicking and we're getting an IP address from Google. So you could update the firewall rule. So all that information and the links are at the top of the store procedure. So jumping back down here, we uh, saw that we're getting data and you can do some inserts and deletes. And then we're gonna create a view. And this view is gonna be where we were going to take our reporting uh, workload and offload that from our OLTP system. And we can go ahead and do that in Looker. So there's instructions on quickly how to uh, click on this report, make a copy, change the data source and the report. I've already done those steps and the report looks like something like this. So now we have our drivers we have our ratings by uh, Burl, and you can see um, these will scroll through. So we have a list of random names, and we've assigned uh, ratings to them. So we can see some data that was tied in our OLTP system, and we also joined it to our trips data in our warehouse. We can see which drivers have low ratings, or we could sort this uh, the opposite way and see which drivers have high ratings. And this is our breakdown between our, our tens, our sevens, eight, and nines. So we can see our graph of our average ratings for the various drivers. And then we can also see ratings by pickup location. So all this data is our taxi data in the cloud, and we brought in our driver data so we can do um, analytics at scale. Um, so the next piece would be just to show you how to shut down the demo and I'll show you how to customize it real quick. So if we go back to our DAGs, you can um, turn off the entire demo. So the demo is running. So this will run for four hours and then turn off, but there's also a destroy. So if you click on this DAG and trigger it, it will delete um, your database, the reverse proxy. It will also delete all the data stream jobs and the BigQuery data set. So you'll have a, basically a, a fresh start. Now the other piece is networking. So I'm gonna to jump to a slide here so we can understand what's happening. I have a main network up here and Composer is in, uh, and Compute are on separate subnets here. And I have a reverse proxy and that's in my Compute subnet. Over here is Composer and my DAGs, um, those DAGs that we're running are running in this Composer subnet. So they can actually see this Postgres database because they're connected through a peer here. So it goes from here down to my Postgres database. Now data streams also has this peer, but peerings can't talk to each other in the cloud. So what happens is this peer talks to this VM. This VM has their IP config tables, uh, so it routes that traffic over to here. So we're going through this reverse proxy over to Postgres so we can reach our private IP of our Cloud SQL database. Um, if you even want to further customize this demo, let me show you how you can do that. So we have a couple things you can do. There, uh, the generated data is in a table. So there's a procedure called create data stream CDC. And what this does is this creates all the insert statements. So this is how I'm able to match my taxi data. Cause what I do is actually query the taxi data and then I generate SQL statements. So I'm generating uh, SQL statements in here and they get put in a table and I'm looping through that table to go ahead and do my change data capture. So let me see if I can show you that table real quick. So this table here has a bunch of uh, SQL statements in it, and basically there's an execution order. So you can customize this table, delete all the records out of here, and that Airflow job will loop through here and run these statements. And if it uh, runs out of statements, it will loop a second time. So that's the first thing you can do. The other piece we can do is I'm going to go to our storage account, which we go to the buckets, and I'm gonna go to the uh, Airflow bucket composer and there's a data folder. 
And within this data folder, there's a SQL. So there's uh, the SQL here is create data stream. Let me find it. It's the create data stream CDC data, and we have a create table script. So we have this Postgres create table schema. And inside here, these will be the SQL statements to create a table and then uh, insert the drivers. And then there's a second script to go ahead and configure the replication. So this whole thing will let you um, go ahead and customize and run this demo and you'll have a complete uh, complete running change data capture so you can do your own testing and see how it works. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the demo.